these are our natives. We have five, again, five oopu that live in the stream. Try to compare them to each other. I mentioned to you guys some of the differences between them. Earlier, we started with oopu alamo'o. At least in the boys, very black and orange, bright colors, very distinct colors. Oopu no pili, there's those white and black kind of stripes that go along horizontally, sideways down, the, down its body. We have oopu na kea. It has that marbled kind of markings on the side of its body and stripes or like these dots on the tail and its fins you can recognize. It kind of also looks like oopu akupa, but the modeling on the side of the body and the stripes on the tail, they are different. Oopu na niha. Again, we don't really see those bright colors you might have seen in that hand-drawn picture, but in this photograph, you'll see the grayish tan color with a black stripe over its eye. So hopefully you can tell the difference between them. The most distinct characteristic about Opai Oiha'a is that it has one big claw and one little claw, and also has some distinct patterns and modeling alongside of its body. Opai Kalaole looks a little bit different. It doesn't have those kind of large claws or one big claw, one little claw. Its claws are very small up front and kind of more brush shaped and they can fan it out uh, when feeding. Different kind of pattern alongside its body as well. One of the more obvious difference, differences between Hihivai and Hapavai is that Hihivai has a very bumpy shell when compared to Hapavai, which has a very smooth shell. The shape of the shell also is very different. Hapavai looks like it has a more of a wing-like projections along the sides of its shell when compared to Hihivai. What about those invasives we talked about? We talked about a quorum fish, and you might have seen these fish before at a pet store. Things we call guppies in that first square on the top. We have a boy on the top, the colorful one. The larger one is on the bottom, it's a female. These are called sword tails in this next square. Um, female on top and a male on the bottom. The male has this long sword on it, the bottom of its fin. And we have mollies. And these mollies here, we have a girl on the top and a boy on the bottom. A little bit of difference in coloration, a little bit more yellow in the male when compared to the female. So these are called live bearers because instead of laying eggs, they give birth to live young. But most other fish lay eggs like fo'opu, like I was mentioning earlier. We have other types of pet store or aquarium fish that are in our streams. We have two different types of catfish that very, are very common in our study sites. We have the bristlenose catfish. And you can, might be able to see right now why they might be called bristlenose catfish. And we have a sucker mouth catfish. But you might see how dense in population they are. You saw a video of bristlenose catfish. If you guys remember that, that, that video I showed earlier, where there was a lot of them underwater in that urban stream. But this is a video of sucker mouth catfish. And in this net right here, you get this, or this student is holding up, you can see how many catfish are in our streams, especially these sucker mouth catfish. And they're kind of big. So some of the differences between them, you might see the bushiness or the bristles on its face on the bristlenose catfish when compared to the sucker mouth catfish, its dots on its body are a little, little different too. But I want you to compare the tails, they are very different. One of them has kind of this whitish tan markings in the corner of its tail, and it's more broom shaped. When compared to the sucker mouth catfish that has a sickle-like tail where it's curved and no white marking. Other animals, the smallmouth bass. This is one of the predatory animals, or carnivorous animals in a stream. And if you didn't catch that video because you weren't focusing your attention on it, I'm going to play it again for you. This is in a fish tank where we have a smallmouth bass. And we have a molly, what we just put in there. It's another invasive species. We're using it to feed our bass because they're very predatory and only eat live animals. You can imagine in the stream, they'll eat whatever's around them, whether it's invasive or whether it's native. But I don't think they can distinguish the difference between the two. I don't think I've seen any ohu in any habitat that has a lot of smallmouth bass in it. That's unfortunate uh, because in our streams in Manoa, there's quite a bit of smallmouth bass. So we don't have a lot of ohu in Manoa stream. Other animals that may look similar to the smallmouth bass, they're called cichlids. C-I-C-H-L-I-D-S. It's going to have you guys all say cichlids. Okay, sick like you're ill and lids, like maybe the lid of a jar. Okay, so cichlid, or plural is cichlids. One of them is called the tilapia. The one on the top is actually a black chin tilapia, common in our lower sites. And our, we have another cichlid, which is called a convict. It has stripes or zebra-like stripes on the sides of its body. 
and you can see a girl on the top and a boy in the bottom. It has longer fins, the boy. And the girl actually has some color on it. It has some uh, orange color on its stomach. So sometimes the, the, the females can be color, colorful. We have aquarium shrimp. And they kind of look like opai kalaole. And I was, I was trying to tell you guys that earlier. It might be hard to tell them apart. These are both aquarium shrimp. And sometimes they're called uh, red cherry shrimp in the aquarium trade. But these ones are not that type of um, variety that is red. And there's sometimes other names for it in the pet stores. They might call them grass shrimp or they might call them Japanese swamp shrimp, but um, the more common name for it, I think, is red cherry shrimp. Um, we also have Tahitian prawns, and the way you can tell a Tahitian prawn uh, different from opai oiha'a, or other type of prawn or shrimp, is that instead of having one big claw, one little claw, they have two big claws. You can see here in both pictures, there are really big claws, really long ones. We have crayfish, and they are a little different from prawns, we can see that they look more, well, it's like you say, husky. They're a lot more compact. They have thick claws and they kind of look like little lobsters. They can be red or red and brown. And we also have aquarium snails, a whole different, a whole bunch of different types of them out there. And the ones that we see in our study sites are Malaysian trumpet snails on the top left, quilted millennia snails on the top right. You can see they're different because they have this type of markings on and they might have ridges on their shells too. The, um, Malaysian trumpet snail is more smooth. And on the bottom is actually clams on their stream. These are Asiatic clams. They're usually golden yellow, but they can be brown too. And none of these types of snails are very large. They're probably about the size of your thumbnail or maybe a little bit larger if they are adults, but they're not very big. 